Hello all, I am Kenneth Anderson, Indian writer and hunter of Scottish origin. I have authored many books detailing my escapades in the jungles of southern India and the hunting of various man-eating tigers, leopards and rogue elephants. This is an excerpt from the chapter, Queer Side of Things from my book, The Tiger Wars. Satya is very kindly taking me back down the memory lane with a visit to the Bhishveshwara temple in Shemanatham. Some years ago, I went to this temple accompanied by some tourists. They were strangers whom I had met casually in the jungle. They had heard of the temple and asked me where it was, and because it was difficult to locate. I had brought them there in person. They were four. We stood inside the Holy of Holies, looking at the stone bulls, called Nandi, when one of the tourists, let us call him Captain Nide, who came from Australia, noticed the brass lamp and took a fancy to it and put it into this pockets. Four days later, I was walking along this main road when a black and yellow taxi, coming down from Uti, overtook me and then halted. Taxis do not generally come to jungles, so I approached it curiously to see who was inside. To my great surprise I saw Captain Nide at the back, propped up with pillows, covered with a blanket, and looking very sick. Next to him sat Mrs. Nide, pale and anxious. As his wife explained, after he took lamp from the temple, Captain Nide fell sick. Dorilius most of the time, due to his high temperature, there were short periods when he regained his senses, and during one of those, he gasped to his wife, Margaret. That lamp, I must take it back to the temple. Get a car, a taxi, anything. I must take it back to the temple today, or I shall die tomorrow. I must take it myself, and there they were. Without comment, I got in beside the driver and directed him to the track that led off the main road to the Shemanath Patti. A little beyond was the temple, but the car could go no further. Captain Nide, who was conscious now, wanted to carry the lamp to the temple, but it was obvious he was quite unfit to walk. So I said to him, John, I think you have done enough to show you're sorry for taking the lamp away. You've brought it back as far as you possible can. The temple deity will understand that. Let Mrs. Nide and me take it back for you, while you rest here. He was too exhausted to reply, but nodded his consent. With his wife carrying the lamp and me leading the way, we went back to the temple. The ancient door creaked open and closed of its own volition behind us. We stood at the altar and Mrs. Nide reverently replaced the old brass lamp on its pedestal. Then we returned in silence to the car. Back at the car, Nide was sound asleep and was perspiring profusely. The fever had left him and he was quite cool to my touch. I instructed the driver to take him back to the hotel at Uti. That, my readers, is exactly what happened. You may offer any explanations you like, I will not argue with you. All I know is that it happened. 